It's August, the dog days of summer, and many bass anglers will search off the deeper breaks for lethargic largemouths. Yet, I've found that not all the bass are deep. On the contrary, in inland lakes, I've spotted quality fish holding surprisingly shallow at this time, positioned along the banks and beaches, and I've found that I can cover water quickly and efficiently by swimming a Yamamoto Speed Senko. Hello everyone, and thanks for your interest in Hook and Look. Accompanied by my close friend and cameraman, Ben Scheidler, who will assist and keep an eye on me topside while I visually show you the pattern from my underwater point of view. Because I think you'll agree that seeing is believing. There are some bass in this lake, right? That's what I hear. I think they're up there tighter. I should see them here because I caught my first fish here. There's a lot of down the area on the edge. There's a lot of young deer bluegill up here. There was my first one. Yeah. Right where he was supposed to be. Another good one right there. Right along here where the sand meets the wheat. Seems to be the edge of the rock. But they're getting all the way up on the beach. Especially in the morning. Look how shallow, huh? Water's a little skinny. You know, when I fished, it was like it was, you know, one here, one there. You're covering a lot of water. But there was nice fish up shallow on those beaches. But with that speed cycle, that thing really turns them on. In the midsummer heat, the bass tend to get sluggish and often require some added stimuli to provoke them into striking. It's the thumping tail action of the Speed Seiko that's paramount. Whether swam horizontally or as the bait falls, it triggers aggressive strikes, especially when the bass are lethargic. When you remove the Speed Seiko from the package, first be sure to separate the tail it's connected to protect its integrity. Now, using 20 pound test Tatsu fluorocarbon line, I'll tie on a 3 aught wide gap hook and a 3 16th ounce bullet weight, which I peg with a bobber stop. I'll then simply Texas rig the worm, making sure the tip of the hook is buried so it's weedless. I'll make my cast up on the shallow sand and retrieve it at a slow, steady speed toward the weed edge. Now here's a tip. When you feel the tap of a strike, it's wise to pause before setting the hook by lowering your rod tip and bowing to the fish. This gives the fish a little more time to engulf the entire seven inch worm, assuring a good hook set. Now set the hook. Now set the hook. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one, too. Yeah, baby. Bass Fishing 101 tells us that bass are edge-oriented, and that inside edge of the grass where it meets the sand is a prime example. That inside edge where the beaches stop and the weight starts. I mean, seeing is believing. Bolstering this early morning shallow pattern was the fact that I saw very few bass holding under the docks and pontoon boats. Now come midday, when the sun is high and hot, these fish will likely seek shelter in the shade, and I'll then switch presentations. I noticed up on the sand were remnant craters of sunfish beds which most likely have some connection to this pattern, but none I can confirm beyond finding bass around them. Nope, there's one right there. Stare it in the camera.
There we go. There we go. Speed Cinco. Oh yeah. Yeah. Come on up here. Yeah, nice fish. Huh? How <laughs> do you like that? Yes, sir. On that Speed Cinco. Up shallow. That's the deal midsummer when the fish are lethargic.